Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. So here we are down by the Thames <laughs> on a sunny morning, yes. which is very rare in London, as you know. <laughs> and uh, we just thought we'd take this opportunity to uh, bask in the sun next to the Thames, close as we could get. Sometimes when the Thames, the tide is out, you can actually walk down along like almost like a beach back in the olden days. Yeah, and they, this was a beach. This was a beach. People yeah. would crowd here in, in hordes, you know, and fill it up just like a beach, like the seaside. <coughs> but that's not why we're here. We're here to hear from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. So All right. At? Canto 3, Chapter 7, Text 13. This is Further Inquiries by Vidura. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Text 13 When the senses are satisfied in the seer super soul, the personality of Godhead and merge in him, all miseries are completely vanquished as after a sound sleep. Mm. Well, well. <clears throat> the quivering of the living entity as described above is due to the senses. Since the entire material existence is meant for sense gratification, the senses are the medium of material activities and they cause the quivering of the steady soul. Hmm. Therefore, these senses are to be detached from all such material activities. <clears throat> According to the impersonalist, the senses are stopped from work by merging the soul in the super soul Brahman. The devotees, however, do not stop the material senses from acting, but they engage their transcendental senses in the service of the transcendence, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In either case, the activities of the senses in the material field are to be stopped by cultivation of knowledge, and if possible, they, are to, they can be engaged in the service of the Lord. The senses are transcendental in nature, but their activities become polluted when contaminated by matter. We have to treat the senses to cure them of material disease, not stop them from acting as suggested by the impersonists. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, text 59, it is said that one ceases all material activities only when satisfied by contact with a better engagement. Consciousness is active by nature and cannot be stopped from working. Artificially stopping a mischievous child is not the real remedy. The child must be given some better engagement so that he will automatically stop causing mischief. Mm. In the same way, the mischievous activities of the senses can be stopped only by better engagement in relationship to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When the eyes are engaged in seeing the beautiful form of the Lord, the tongue engaged in taking prashad or remnants of foodstuff offered to the Lord, the ears are engaged in hearing His glories, the hands engaged in cleaning the temple of the Lord, the legs engaged in visiting the temple, or when all the senses are engaged in transcendental variegatedness, then only can the transcendental senses become satiated and eternally free from material engagement. The Lord as the super soul residing in everyone's heart and as the supreme personality of Godhead in the transcendental world far beyond the material creation is the seer of all our activities. Hmm. Our activities must be so transcendently saturated that the Lord will be kind enough to look upon us favorably and engage us in his transcendental service. Then only can the senses be satisfied completely and be no longer troubled by material attraction. Mm. So you're going to get the mm? higher taste mm. and then you forget about that stuff that actually causes you misery. Mm. Mm. Trying to think of verse 259, it's the Param Drishtva verse. Um, Vidyavinaya is something you know, that's not it. Vishya vini vartante nirharasya dehinaha rasavarjam raso pyashwa param drishtva navartate. That the embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, but the taste for sense objects still remains. But by ceasing such engagements and experiencing a higher taste, one can become fixed in consciousness. 
I really like the last sentence. And Prabhupada says, our activities must be so transcendentally saturated that the Lord will be kind enough to look upon us favorably and engage us in His transcendental service. Then only can the senses be satisfied completely and be no longer troubled by material attraction. So for me that's really, really powerful. It says a lot because means that it has to be trans it means our activities have to be saturated you know completely absorbed um, in transcendental activity then the Lord will be kind enough to look upon us favorably and engage us in transcendental service which seems ironic because if you're already transcendentally saturated you know but but you have to be saturated to actually be engaged in service on the transcendental platform. Then the senses are satisfied and completely uh, are no longer troubling. Anyway, that's nice. The example of the child also, artificially stopping a mischievous child <laughs> is not the real remedy. Child must be given some better engagement, mm -hmm. then he will automatically stop causing mischief. Interesting. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's like when. Um, <laughs> The example they give of the child that grabs like a, the parent's mobile phone and you know they like give it like give it back and they grab holds onto it tight and start screaming and all that mm. and as soon as you give it something else it, it it literally drops it it doesn't even hand it to you just that's how detached immediately just drops it and goes to the other thing you know mm. and that's the same for us it's like we won't even give it a second look like that which we were trying to mm. engage the senses in and maybe sometime later you're like, wow, I used to be into that, I used to do that, and you just don't think about it, you know? Mm. There's a giant duck. Is that a duck? No, it's a, it's a goose, Oh, it's actually. a goose. It's coming it's towards Canadian us. Canadian goose. Canadian goose. It's busy drinking from us. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, it's gone now. Anyway, text 714, it was okay until man started coming. Yeah. Okay, so text 14. <coughs> Simply by chanting and hearing of the transcendental name, form, etc., of the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one can achieve the cessation of unlimited mis miserable conditions. Therefore, what to speak of those who have attained attraction for serving the flavor of the dust of the Lord's lotus feet? So this is amazing. I think just this verse is really wonderful. Simply by chanting and hearing of the transcendental name, form, etc., of the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna, one can achieve the cessation of unlimited miserable conditions. <coughs> Therefore, a man showed up and he's feeding the geese. Therefore, what to speak of those who have attained attraction? For serving the flavor of the lotus, the dust of the Lord's lotus feet. Purport. Two different methods for controlling the material senses are recommended in the Vedic scriptural wisdom. One of them is the process of Gyan, or the path of philosophical understanding of the Supreme, Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. The other is that of direct engagement in the transcendental loving devotional service of the Lord. Of these two most popular methods, the path of devotional service is recommended here as the best because one on the path of devotional service does not have to wait for the attainment of the fruitive results of pious activities or for the results of knowledge. So it means it's quicker, basically. It's, it's more, uh, yeah, it's more quick. The two stages of executing devotional service are, first, the stage of practicing devotional service with our present senses under the regulations of the recognized scriptures, that means Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, and second, attaining sincere attachment for serving the particles of the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord, which is Raganuga Bhakti, or more spontaneous devotional service. The first stage is called sadhana bhakti, or devotional service for the neophyte, that's us, which is rendered under the direction of a pure devotee, means the spiritual master. And the second stage is called raga bhakti, 
in which the mature devotee automatically takes to the various services of the Lord out of sincere attachment. We're hoping to get to that stage at some point. My wife is already at that stage. but The great sage Maitreya now gives the final answer to all the questions of Vidura. Devotional service to the Lord is the ultimate means to mitigate all the miserable conditions of material existence. The path of knowledge or that of mystic gymnastics may be adopted as a means for the purpose, but unless mixed with bhakti or devotional service, they are unable to award the desired result. By practicing sadhana bhakti, one may gradually rise to the point of raga bhakti, and by performing raga bhakti and loving transcendental service, one can even control the supreme powerful Lord. So this is really, really uh, important and exceptional. So we have to perform uh, Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, regulated um, sadhana and uh, under the guidance of spiritual master or, or pure devotee and by regularly doing that we'll come to the platform where it's not an artificial imposition but it's actually that the natural propensity of the heart to love and serve Krishna, to love and serve God, becomes predominant and manifest. Then when we come to that, that point and that platform, we will naturally want to serve Krishna and perform the activities of devotional service with love instead of just out of, you could say in one sense, just out of duty or just because we feel like we have to. Then, as Prabhupada says here at the end of the purport, then, once we come to that platform, what begins to happen is that... Um, yeah, we're going to go. Yeah. So, we're, we're, we're going to look behind you. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's where we were sitting just like literally two minutes ago when I jumped up. Because Bob was like, ah. <laughs> and I saw the water coming in, and then the cushion in the seat was floating. <laughs> and anyway, this is the flood of mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, London flooded with Krishna consciousness, <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, the flood of uh, praying is love of Godhead that comes when you read the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's like open and <laughs>